What's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. You know, I gotta be dramatic with it. I mean, what else do you expect from me? <laughs> Listen, today I'm so excited because you get to meet my friend and fellow Booking Magnet. I mean, I must say, her name is Stacy Greenwell. I met her when I moved to LA pre-COVID. We would see each other at auditions all the time and then we realized we had multiple friends. You know, back in the day, we, was, we used to go to auditions in person and even though you didn't get the job, you remember seeing the same people in, in the waiting room and you realize, hey, I'm in really good company here. So even if I don't book it and Stacy books it, well then all is well. And that's how Stacy and I got to become friends. So, you know, Stacy actually used to be a lawyer and she was like, bump that, I'm gonna be an actor. <laughs> I know, it's a crazy story, which you will enjoy, I'm sure. So make sure you get you something to drink, a little beverage, tea, water, whatever you need, and enjoy this interview with Stacy Greenwell. Oh goodness, we over here kicking and already laughing before we even get started. <laughs> Stacy, Stacy Greenwell, hello. Hello, oh, my yeah. friend. Nice to be talking with you today. Same here, y'all. <laughs> Welcome back to Booking Magnet Magic. You're in for a treat. I know I say that every episode, but I ain't lying. You're always in for treats. I just got treats on treats. Stacy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yes. Stacy and I met in these LA streets. Mm -hmm. When I moved back to LA, I don't know when exact. I don't know if we met at an audition first. You remember? <laughs> we met at a television academy event. We're both members of the television academy. Okay. We were, I'm trying to remember the show. I want to say Atlanta was the show that was having a panel discussion. Okay. I'm I'm about 50% sure about that part, but I know we sat next to each other and started talking and, you know, we started just, you know, when'd you get here and yeah. you know, we found out we had a lot of friends in common and mm -hmm. we just stayed in touch ever since. That was, that was probably 2018, probably. That sounds about right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I moved here in 2017 in January. Okay. okay. So it could have been 2017 or 18, but y'all see the power of just, speaking saying hi that's right yeah you know people get so stressed out like I don't like networking I'm like it's not net you just saying hi it's just talking right <laughs> a, a lovely lady next to me I said hey how you doing we struck up a conversation and here it is years later yes. still connected now I'm doing yes. the podcast <laughs> and I know it's like we're in this in this pandemic era but Back in the day, y'all, there was this thing. We would go to in-person auditions. You know? <laughs> I remember that. Right. And so we would see each other. And it's, it's always a beautiful thing when you are walking in the in a waiting room. And of course, you're there to do your job and kill it and book. But you just naturally, if you allow yourself, can build friendships with people. Because you know, at the end of the day, you're not in control of that. But you just, you see the same faces all the time. You're going to start speaking. You know, absolutely. It is such a small world when you, when you're, when you're out in Hollywood, you're like, oh, I know everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just see these people and, you know, you'll see them on a commercial. Hey, congratulations on that commercial or that show. And, oh, that's my friend. And you'll, it's almost like high school or something like right. that. You know, everybody knows everybody. And, you know, it's, it's nice. It makes it feel more like, like a family, you know, yeah. it's, if, if especially if I don't win something, I love it when my friend wins. Exactly. Thing that I thought I was trying to get. I'm like, hey, if I don't get it, I'm glad she got. <laughs> yeah, and it's that thing too of, I like to think of like birds of a feather flock together, and there's something to be said when you're in the same room where you know, and, pro and proximity is power. And yeah. it's like, hey, we're this, this we're all good. Yep. You know? yeah. So I know we dove right in, but I, you know, I love, I want y'all to hear the power of connection and not being isolated and not feeling alone. And you can still be successful while being kind and okay. opening you your heart to other people, but let's go wine. Let's rewind. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Where is Stacey from? How'd you get into acting? I want, I want all the tea. I want all, all right. the tea. How did it begin? Let me give it to you. Um, well, it didn't start until I was in law school. Um, I Somebody had asked me to do a mock trial. 
and we would pretend to be each other's witnesses. And somebody asked me to be a mother whose son had been shot or something terrible and horrific. And I said, okay, I put on a wig and glasses. I got on the stand. I was crying. I was boohooing. Like I was really getting into it. You were full out. I was full out. I was full (laughs) out. I was like, all right, you gave me a job. I'm going to do it. And apparently other people didn't do that. They would like state the facts of the case and it would be very straightforward. But I looked at it as an opportunity to have fun. So I got into it. The professor called a recess and was like, are are you okay? Because I was full on (laughs) ball. Yeah, I'm okay. This is fun. And he was looking at me like, this is very strange with this (laughs) woman. This is very strange. But I loved it. Afterwards, people were asking me if I was an actress and if I had done this before. And I was like, no, it just, it was just something that seemed really fun to me. I had never even really thought about acting and I just jumped at the opportunity and I loved it. It was so much fun, but still didn't think it was going to be a career. It was just a fun experience that I had. Cause I think it was like the second or third year in law school. So I already had a path kind of set out. What kind of lawyer were you planning on being? um, Well, I was a security securities and bankruptcy lawyer for a few years. And so I, what did I do? So then after that, it was like a little seed that, you know, really didn't mean too much, but it was like, it was fun. And then, but I do sing. And so some of my friends knew that I sang. And so the whiz came to town when I was in law school. I think it was the third year I was there. And somebody said, well, you sing, go ahead and audition. And I said, well, I don't really act per se. I don't know what I'm doing, but I said, I'll give it a try. And I auditioned for the whiz and got the part of Dorothy. And when- oh, we... Oh, oh! By the way, <laughs> I just no it, girl. It was nothing but God. He was like, "Pay attention. This might be something you could do that you enjoy." But I didn't know it. Once, once again, it was more like a hobby, mm-hmm. and I would be afraid to sing. And I know you're a singer as well, and, mm-hmm. and beautiful, a wonderful singer, but. For me, I would do it, but I would get so afraid. Every time I did it, I would feel so exposed. And and I would do a decent job, but afterwards I'd be, how was it? Did I hit that high note? Did you like the low part? Like I would obsess about it and it wasn't fun for me. But when I was in a musical and I mixed acting with singing together, it was a whole new world for me. And it was actually enjoyable to play a character singing instead of being myself and and yeah, and that that was that was the seed that didn't become watered until a couple of years later. <laughs> After that, gotcha. Yeah. And so, where I, I think I missed where where are you from? Where are you Atlanta? From? Oh, ACL. Yeah. I didn't. I did not know that. CL. I yeah. didn't know that. So you went? Did you go to college in Georgia? No, Georgetown for undergrad. Okay. And, and UVA for law school. Okay, so now you're out of law school. You did yeah. the whiz. Sees planning, but you're not really paying attention to it yet. You're still full, full full force with being a lawyer. Where does the shift happen? Well, I had already had a job, I believe, even when I was doing the whiz. So the path was good to go. This was a fun little experiment. But then when I went and started working on the very first day when we did a tour of the building, I felt like this is not your life. It was the very first day. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't feel like this on the first day. You you just spent all these years in school and this is a firm you really wanted to work at. So I told myself, at least I have to try it. I have to try it. I can't just quit before knowing what I was quitting. So I tried it for two years and January 1st came around or whatever year it was. And I was like, I'm out. I can't, I don't want to do this anymore. So I was looking at inside the actor studio and I thought to myself, I would love to go to that school. And so I auditioned and by the grace of God, I got in. And a few months later, I told my firm, I'm out. I'm going to New York to go to acting school. <laughs> wow. Wow. And for, for our listeners who don't know where, what school is that? Actor Studio Drama School in New York. And so it was an, uh, was it a two-year conservatory? Three. Three. Mm-hmm. So, so now you're just in it. Yeah. In it. 
lit up, I imagine. <laughs> lit up, feeling good, feeling in my purpose. You know, also feeling like a fish out of water, but excited about it. You know, after doing something that I wasn't passionate about. And by the way, being a lawyer takes a lot of time, like it's 80 hour work weeks and all of this. And so if you're not fully into it, it's too much time to spend doing something you don't enjoy. And so to make that switch to something that I was passionate about felt felt amazing. I was just so grateful to be there. And I was a little older than some of the people. And, um, but that didn't bother me. Like I felt, I felt amazing just to be there. It was a blessing, a real blessing. How did your family, like your close immediate family feel when they heard the switch or did they have a, they already knew? No, well, they were, they were excited for me. You know, they knew that, well, for my mom, she wanted me to really go to get graduate school. <laughs> so she was happy that I achieved that. Like I became a lawyer. I have, you know, something to fall back on, so to speak. So she was happy that I did my education first. And um, everybody else was just, they were like, you know, as long as you're happy, go for it. Nobody really said anything negative or discouraged me. Now, People in the world, you know, like when I meet people and I say, oh, I used to be a lawyer and then I became an actor. Oh, why'd you do that? That's that's terrible. You know, like people, people at where your parents disappointed in you, like people say really <laughs> mean things. But no, everybody was happy for me because they knew I was happy. Yeah, I love that. So you're in New York, you're in this conservatory, three-year conservatory. How long did you stay in doing the New York pounding of the pavement life four years three more years after graduating I was there you know doing plays and musicals and I actually worked as a part-time lawyer during the day Mm -hmm. but they all knew that I was an actress I went into the audition I mean not the audition I call it everything everything. me too (laughs) the interview and I told them look I'm an actress I want to be able to go to auditions I have shows at night. And I know that was kind of risky to do, but I was like, listen, rather tell them now than sneak around and all of that. And they were so supportive. They would even come to my shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that was crazy that I was able to do both of those things and to be so supported, but, um, but it it worked out. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know. I just wanted to do television. Um, That was always, kind of my goal I thought it would start in New York but New York is cold I had to get out of there I'm from New York I know (laughs) you know I know because that that quality of life you're like I I can do this in a warmer climate (laughs) exactly exactly and a beach and all that you know even though my family was on the east coast I was like I gotta I gotta go for it I gotta give it a go and so I've been here for about 11 years and I love it I love it so the rest, as they say, is history. You know, I assume you got here and you just did what you did in New York. You just make yourself known and Hustle. right. And audition by audition leads to the next, leads to the next. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I mean, what a what a wonderful story. And I hope those of you watching and listening are encouraged. Stacey, I'm always sharing to the community about not being afraid to start over, like start a new chapter. Just because you started something doesn't mean you have to finish that. I have a lot of clients who are seniors or out of fresh out of divorce or the empty nest because the kids are off to have graduated and so I'm like come on we that's need exactly to. right it's we only have this life I mean you know maybe there's others but this is the one I'm living right now yeah. <laughs> and I say live it to the fullest you know there's nothing wrong with trying something there's nothing wrong with failing I mean, I would rather have tried something than than not, you know, even if it even if it fails, you know, and and what is failure? You know what I mean? Like you can always try again. You can always do something different. You can always change your mind. There's there's no limit to what we can do. And so if you keep that in mind, it can really help you go. I mean, I think when I was in New York, I was kind of getting frustrated with my acting career and mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do next I knew I liked acting but it was like I'm not I wasn't really um 
feeling like I was doing my best there mm-hmm. in New York. And I felt like, well, maybe, maybe California has something to offer me. And people would say, well, you would need, you need an agent. You need, you know, you're not the youngest anymore. You're not white. You're not the, like people had so many negative things to say, but I was like, no, nope, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it a go. I got my faith. Mm-hmm. And I got my drive, <laughs> put that on, you know, and just go out there. It was almost like at first I wanted like a red carpet to be rolled out for me, like right. welcome to LA. And then I realized, hey, that, that red carpet might not be rolled out just yet. So just mm-hmm. go and tell LA, here I am and and I'm ready. Yeah, you know? I love that so much. <laughs> I certainly know that's, I certainly came to LA the first time, not when we met, but when I came mm-hmm. in 2011 after Lion King, I was like, hello, right. I'm here. Right. Don't you see my Broadway credits? It was like, <laughs> nobody cares. Uh, do you yeah. know what you're doing? No. <laughs> you kind of got to, you know, start from scratch and do what you got to do. The first week that I was here, I did like a workshop of like a week long workshop meeting, casting directors, agents and all that stuff which was great because I did start to forge relationships right away. And I was able to get an agent within the first week that I was here, which was amazing. So I was like, all right, it's on. I got an agent. But girl, nothing. Crickets. I had no auditions, like none. And at that point, I realized, okay, it's not enough to have an agent. You still have to do more. So started doing more workshops, started um, sending out marketing materials, started submitting myself, like really hitting the pavement, introducing myself to people, because if they don't know you're here, right. they're not going to call you. <laughs> if they don't know what you can do, they're not going to call you. So I um, I learned a valuable lesson about my career. It's not, it's not up to somebody else to make it happen. Yeah, you can't, and it can't be the best kept secret. I, that's not my plan. I don't like that plan. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> I and there's a lot. Enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot in every market. There's, ama- there's amazing talent everywhere. Yeah. And I know, especially now, in, as we're in the digital age, and we're in the digital age now more than ever because of how COVID has affected us and just going to meet people's drop ins doesn't exist anymore, you know. And it can be very frustrating for artists who just want to stay in creative brain. The thought of having to do the show in the show, the the business of the show business can be very challenging. Just it's a whole mental reframe you have to do. Um, But it sounds like you, you knew you came in knowing that that was a necessary piece. Well, at least certainly when you got to LA, because you saw having the agent was just not going to do it. What else can you do? Exactly. And I felt like time was of the essence. And I felt like, you know, I just couldn't imagine putting all my all my faith and hope in this other person for my career. I was like, this is I have to do something. He 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 couldn't even begin to care more about my career than me. So I was like, you know, I'm going to have to do something in the business part. You know, for for many, it's not the fun part. We just want to show up and act. But the business part is necessary. It's yeah. necessary. And, you know, when when people come to me and they say, oh, it's it's too much or they become overwhelmed, set small goals for yourself this week. I'm going to send out 10 headshots. I'm going to, you know, meet five people at this event. I'm going to, you know, make it bite sized. Right. So that you don't feel like, oh, I have I have to meet every single casting director. I mean, truth be told, you probably don't even need to meet every casting director because that might not be your lane. You know, exactly. if you don't want to do children's shows, then maybe you don't need to meet that casting officer. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can make it manageable, but you have to do it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you can, you can, I was like, you can bitch about it, but who got to get done? (laughs) At the end of the day. (laughs) Right. When you, when you were growing up and I know the acting bug didn't hit for real, for real till later, but what kind of things did you like to watch when you were growing up in Atlanta? Like, were you into movies, TV shows, comedies? Was it really plays? What sparked, what made you lean in? Well, you know, it's funny you said, plays because I didn't see many but I saw one and it was Annie mm. and I loved 
Annie, Annie. so much. I mean, I, I wonder how old I was, maybe nine or something like that, eight, nine. And we went to see Annie. Let me tell you, I played that record over that whole soundtrack. It's a hard not like girl, right. I was singing the mess out of them song <laughs> for like a couple of years. Annie, and I never, I still wasn't thinking of me being on stage, but that whole fictional world and dancing around and singing, it seemed so exciting to me. And it was just something that brought me joy. And so, so yeah, Annie had a really big um, influence on me. And then it's funny because really, I don't think about this often, but when I think about the the movies and the plays that I like the most, they're all musicals. Interesting. Uh, yeah, which honestly, I don't think I put that together until right now, but um, Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. I sung the mess out of that thing for years. Still do. I love Mary Poppins. Um, what else did I like? The Wiz. Oh, yeah. Oh. Classic. Classic. And that's why it was such a big deal when I got to play Dorothy, because I love Diana Ross. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just, Me I adore. When I was 10, I had a, a birthday cake that was shaped in, a, in the, the shape of a Diana Ross album, like when I was 10 <laughs> years old. Come through, that, Diana fan. That was serious. I was a for real, still am a real Diana Ross fan. So the music element was always really important to me. Um, but I didn't, I still wasn't thinking about acting. Um, who else? Sally Field, mm-hmm. one of my favorites. I just, every time she was on screen, it just felt so real. You know, it, it it didn't even feel like acting. Sally Field is one of the best. I, I, totally, agree. Her. I totally agree. Um, before we hit record on today's session, we were talking about that, uh, talking about that. And I, I I just grew up watching her. Like she's just, and she just felt like a staple. She's, yeah. She worked so much. All she the time. felt like a staple in my house. Right. Um, From DJ and the bear to, right. <laughs> you know, Steel Magnolia, just whatever. She was always doing something. Yeah, she got some Sybil. Ooh, that's <laughs> Sybil. Yes, that that really just as a kid. As a kid, I was just I didn't even understand what was really happening. Right, <laughs> right, right. I did understand that this one actress was dra- drawing me into all of yeah. it, and of course. You know, still Magnolia is the, the when the funeral, the funeral scene, like it's just it's yeah, no better. <laughs> yeah, and, and she's really been amazing throughout her whole career. Like you can look at stuff real early to right now. Like she's just consistently amazing. And yeah. she was, I was a still, I'm a big fan of hers. Yes, I love that. You know what? When I, you know, what I hear you talking, it just I'm transported back to like myself watching and like not di- dissecting like I do now as an as an artist and a teacher right. you know as a mentor but just being trans 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 what's the word trans oh, uh, transported transported yeah. into whatever world was created yeah um you know and as on this show we I always like to remind our viewers that each and every one of us has something that's magnetic like that you know it's about getting to know yourself and what you bring to the table and so my question for you, Stacey, is what do you know for sure is like your magical superpower? You, no one has to validate this for you. When you step on a set or when you step in a room, you just bring this, you ooze this. I think that I bring joy that's infectious. I think I have a way of making other people feel good around me. Mm -hmm. which is something that I pride myself on. I love to be encouraging and motivating. And, um, and I think, I think that's why people like to be around me (laughs) because Mm -hmm. I like to lift people up. You know, I have a lot of friends that call me up if they're feeling bad and they'll say, I need one of your pep talks and I'll just go in like hard. (laughs) And they're like, I don't even really need to know everything that's going on. If they say they need to be lifted, I'm like, listen, you are a queen. You are smart. You are beautiful. Mm. People, you you are talented. People want to be like, I, I can go in hard. And so I love that when friends 
need a pick me up, they call, they call me. That mm-hmm. makes me feel good. So it's really special. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, to be and to be that, to be that light, that is, that is huge. That is huge. And people feel that, you know, I've been, I've had a lot of these conversations and Joy has come up with several guests and it's that thing of, think about how important that is for our life, being on set with producers and other actors for 12 to 14 hours a day. You want to be like, when that energy ain't right, you know, we've all had some doozies also, you know, you you can bring that good energy on a long shoot day. That's really appreciated. Yeah. I think, you know, in general, people just, I think you need to be yourself when you're on set, whatever that is. And I remember when I first started, I was afraid to not so much be myself, but I would kind of um, hide my light under a bushel, if you will. Like I wanted to make myself small. I wanted to stay out of the way. I didn't want to talk to anybody. So I kind of wanted to stay out of the way. And then I thought about it. I'm like, they're people just like me. So Mm -hmm. it's okay for me to start up a conversation. It's okay for me to, you know, talk about whatever, acting, the weather, you know, where they're from, like the same way I would talk to anybody else. And Mm -hmm. when I started um, just being comfortable with letting my life shine, with being myself, I found that it made my experience on set better. You know, I wasn't like looking like, oh, how is he or how is she? Are they open to? No, 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 no. I'm responsible for the way I feel on set. So, so be free, talk yeah. to people, you know, and if they don't want to talk, that's completely fine. So okay. I'm going, I'm right. going to be in me no matter what, you know, <laughs> so it, it made me feel better on set to just kind of be free, if you will. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You know, it's in that, I think that comes with time, but this is the beauty yeah. of also hearing from seasoned actors to know that you can save some of that time of playing small and just trying to hide right (laughs) and and just step into who you are and and just own that a bit more that's what makes us that's what makes us unique that's what makes people want to call you back there's a level of of comfort and confidence in being yourself Mm -hmm. and when people see that they they usually reward it like okay you know, because because if I'm carrying that scared energy when I'm offset, you know, just sitting in the chairs or whatever, of course, I'm going to bring it to set as well, you know, because you're, you're bringing yourself to set. So if I'm like, oh, then I get on set and try to be confident. It's like, no, no, no. Carry that right. confidence. Right. Yeah. Carry it throughout parody in the audition room care. And even if you're not there yet, even if you're not confident yet act like you are we're mm-hmm. actors I used to tell right. myself, <laughs> come on I used to tell myself that um I was like how would Denzel Washington walk on because <laughs> it made me feel more confident of course you know um I'm not Denzel and Denzel has a high level of confidence it, it appears mm-hmm. but I'm like if I do my version of that it's gonna feel right you know mm-hmm. and so that that really did carry me through you know, some of my beginning times on set, you know, just, just remembering, Hey, I don't have anything to feel small about. Hang my head up high. Now that does not mean be obnoxious either. Right. Right. <laughs> Let me say that the Stacy told me no, 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 no. Keep it professional. <laughs> keep it polite. Keep it friendly. Don't be all up in people's faces asking for phone numbers and all. Right. <laughs> right. I'm right. not saying that, but the same way you would want somebody to engage with you in a professional setting, you should do that. <laughs> I agree. I agree. She's like, Stacey and Christine said, I should hey, just hold hey. up. Hold up. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is no, not no, what no. said. That was your <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh, y'all. Wait till you click on Stacey's link and look her up on IMDb. You are a booking magnet. You're... <laughs> Self. I'm, surra- I'm surrounded. <laughs> right. I am surrounded by booking magnets. I may have coined that term for myself, but I love 
seeing it. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. You know, you've done a lot of gigs. What paid gig? made you feel, I'm really good at this. Once Ooh. it was done, he was like, I'm good at this. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, <laughs> the irony is the thing that I was first proud of, I actually, it didn't air, it was cut. <laughs> okay, hey, it counts though, this is the, this is the good good. I, I did um, True Blood and my character, um, I guess my son had been killed by a vampire or something like that. And I'm in the morgue and I'm, or not a vampire, wolf. I don't, girl, I don't know. But something, it had been killed by some, some mystical creature. And I'm in the morgue with one of the characters and I'm crying. And... I just remember really, it was really, I was feeling it like in the audition room, whatever, like I was, I was feeling it. I was that mother and I felt like I was doing a good job and the camera wasn't even on me. It was on the other guy. And the director came over to me and said, Hey, you don't have to go full out. You know, the camera isn't even on you yet. They're about to turn it around. So, you know, you can save it. Mm -hmm. And without skipping a beat, I said, Oh, I have more. I don't, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> because it was a fact. You just, you you knew. I guess, I don't know what had happened, but I had never cried on camera before like that. So I don't know why I said it. It wasn't like I was so experienced. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. And afterwards I was like, what, what are you doing? And I had to have a talk with myself. I said, listen, girl, you better bring it. You just told this man that you had more. So what's funny, what's funny though, is I did have more. Mm. And when the camera turned on me, girl, I went in and I was crying for like, like that was like a 12 hour day or some, something crazy where we were just doing that scene over and over. I kept drinking water. Good um, tip for everybody. Stay hydrated. If you're crying, right. I was drinking water and just crying, crying, crying. And I, I, was, I could not wait to see this because I was like, this is some guest star realness. They're going to give me an Emmy. Yeah. They're going to try to give me a Tony and an Oscar too. Whatever they can give me for this performance. <laughs> I thought that this was going to be it. I was ready. And the director called me a couple of weeks before it was supposed to air. And he said, look, I just want to tell you, you did a great job. But the episode was too long and we had to cut your scene. He said, but my wife is an actress and I know how important these things are. So I just wanted to call you personally and let you know that I, I really enjoyed your performance and we will work again together. Wow. That was really kind. It was so kind. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I, I was almost more flattered, you know, that somebody would call me than even seeing it. I'm like, you took time out of your day to give me a call. And, um, and we ended up working together on two HBO product projects after that, um, Sharp Objects and Big Little Lies. He was one of the executive producers on both of those shows. Wow. Y'all see y'all hear that? Let me you tell you. never know where these relationships go. You never know. And I was just, it, it was, it was a surreal experience. And then, you know, and, and people say things, but I always assume the best. Somebody says, oh, suppose you go to an audition and they say, good job. And somebody say, oh, well, did they really mean that? Or were they just saying that? 
I say, why not believe it? Mm-hmm. What's the harm? When he said he, we'll work together again, I thought, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Why not? It exactly. doesn't serve me to think something negative. Or he was just saying that. How does that serve me? It doesn't. It feels better to think this man really wants to work with me. I should really feel confident about that. And it, and it did give me confidence. I felt I felt better going into my next job because of it. I love that. And fun fact, y'all, Stacy and I both had a chance to cry our faces off on The Good Doctor. Yes. <laughs> At different times, different episodes, different yeah. seasons too, I believe. <laughs> yeah. But honey, that, that you get to put your work in. Come on, come on. Patience in here, crying and getting all types of ups and downs. What's the yeah. diagnosis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that's such an inspiring story. And the two great shows too. I, I love both of those shows, Sharp Objects and Big Little Lies. Um, yeah, I, I love that. I love that nugget. And I'm going to say it again, just, just, just to say it for myself. You, you get to choose, like you get to choose whether I'm always talking about law of attraction and, po- you know, think positive or negative, right? You make, it's your choice. So you can choose to believe, oh, he's just saying that or choose right. to believe we will. Like, right. and which one enter just feels better to my spirit and to my heart. Right. It feels better to think that, yes, it will happen, you know, Absolutely. and not be jaded about it, you know, which can, you know, it just doesn't feel good. We got to, we have to just really be really protective of our energy that we put out, mm-hmm. you know, and we are doing so much to ourselves that can deplete that. So Absolutely. I love that that's where your mindset was. Absolutely. We we need to, you know, I, I think people understand you should be kind to other people, but maybe even more importantly, I should be kind to myself. I think it's it's very important to think about the words that you say about yourself. And, you know, because that's that's affecting everything you do. That's that's in your brain. And other people might say negative things about you. That's one thing, but I'm not going to tear myself down. The world already tries to do that. I don't, I'm not going to take part in that. I'm not going to take part in that. You know, so we we need to really be kind and patient and generous with, with ourselves, especially if you're in this industry, because we're going to face so much negativity. We're going to get a lot of rejections. We really need to handle ourselves with self-care. Absolutely. You know? Otherwise, how can we keep on doing what we do? (laughs) Yes. And that's a perfect segue to, you know, for me, our mental health is paramount, you know, and being kind to ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's not always easy. This career is exciting as this career is, you know, the adrenaline, it comes with ebbs and flows. Like the thing that is consistent about this industry is its inconsistency, Absolutely. right? So we're all, we're operating different seasons. And so there'll be seasons where you are busy, busy, and then it's quiet for months, or it's down to you and one other person and the ghost of someone else when you really had your heart set on mm-hmm. portraying a role. How have you dealt with that over the years? Um, you know, especially when it's a really close call, it doesn't pan out or, you know, or just a, a lull in being called in? Like, what it, How? What does that look like for you? Well, if there's a lull, the first thing I try to add, ask myself is what can I do? <clears throat> what can I do to better myself, better my skills, better, um, better prepare myself for the next opportunity? Um, do, I, do I need to market more? Like I'm trying to change that lull <laughs> you know, right. so I'm trying to think, you know, do do I need to know more about what's going on, what I'm right for? You know, like if I see a part, I need to figure out how to get to that casting director. So I really try to change the low because mm-hmm. um, I don't want it for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want it. But, you know, it happens. Mm-hmm. And but it's still an opportunity. I could still be working on my memorization. I could still be breaking down scenes. I could still be reading. I could still be working. I could still be acting even if I'm not being paid. Mm-hmm. And it's important to do that because if if there's an audition and then a long time before the next, I can't be all dusty 
when right. it's time for me to audition again. So make sure that you're still acting, even though you're not getting paid for it. I think that's really important. And then as far as losing out on jobs, um, what can I say about that? When I audition, first off, I immediately try to put it out of my mind if I can. I know that's easier said than done, but girl, I would throw away some sides. I will, I will, I've gotten kind of good at forgetting about stuff to a certain extent because I don't want to be waiting by the phone. I don't want to be, it's too, it can be too painful. So I really try to release it as much as I can. Almost think of the audition as an opportunity to perform. Mm -hmm. and that was a blessing in and of itself. You know, a lot of people didn't get that blessing. Just the audition is a blessing. If you get a call back, another blessing. If you get, if you book it even better, but take it for what it was like two, two, um, you know, experiences or, you know, the call back and the whatever two opportunities for you to show your work and then throw it away. Mm -hmm. Um, if it goes to somebody else, it was meant for that person to have. And I just like to think the next thing that comes my way is going to be even better. There was a there was a reason I didn't get that one. Maybe I didn't get that guest star because I'm about to get this series regular. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I didn't get that 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 supporting role in that movie because I'm about to get the lead in the next. Mm -hmm. Like keep keep moving forward. And the thing is, in this in this industry, there's always more. Like, it's not like that was the last role. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they took the last role. They got roles coming out every day. And if you, think about, if you think about opportunities that were missed or lost or whatever, say say it's a, a relationship that didn't work out. And you're like, oh, man, you know, I thought this was the one. Guess what? You're going to find the next one and he's going to be even better than the last. You know what I mean? So... Mm -hmm. If I think about stuff that I was upset about or sad about, there's always something better that ends up happening. So think of those times. I can think about roles that I didn't get. I'll give you an example. When, um, what was it? Um, Modern Family. Mm -hmm. I used to, I loved Modern Family and I wanted to be on it so bad. And I went to one of the workshops and met the casting director and he called me in. I was, I think, on hold for whatever role that I auditioned for. I was so excited and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And I was disappointed. And I was like, oh, well, you know, there'll be another opportunity. Lo and behold, maybe a, two weeks later, they called me in for something else that was a bigger role than mm -hmm. the other one. It was, I was able to work with Ty Burrell, who I adore. The first one, I was working with somebody else. So I ended up getting a better part than yeah. the first one. Sometimes you could be chasing after pennies when there's dollars yeah. coming your way, you know? So let it go. That's that's just the way it goes. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes somebody else going to win, but it'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. I love that. I love how you said, again, I'm, I always get such good nuggets from everybody on this on this podcast, but I love how you said, this. it's not the last one. Like, yeah, girl. They stay smart. <laughs> they're making them right now. They're making roles, new, fresh roles for everybody. You, me, everybody who's listening, fresh mm -hmm. roles being made as we yes. speak. <laughs> they're being baked for us, y'all. These baked up roles. just for you, just for you, just for me, just for the listeners. It, it ain't over. Let, I, let I, that I sister get have. that role. <laughs> I certainly have had that same testimony. Audition for something, a, a show. Yeah. multiple times end up getting a bigger role or better role or or you know there have been times where I'm pinned for two things and the first pin come in I'm secretly hoping that pin actually goes away that's how when I booked blackish I was pinned for a Disney show oh wow and like I, I auditioned for blackish after that got pinned for that I was like I cannot miss out on blackish for this kid's show like and I, I got real God, I got real clear with the universe and God, all right, God. Listen. Thank you more, please. But hold up, hold up. <laughs> okay. And lo and behold, 
It all like, worked out. Show, I got released. I was like, cool. Exactly. <laughs> and I booked black because it was the same exact window. Like that's, that's crazy. That's a recurring theme in my career. It's to the point where I think it's funny now. It'll be quiet for three, four months. Really like auditioning a lot, but just quiet on bookings. Mm-hmm. And then be like, boom, four shows at once. I'd be like, <laughs> And then I have to choose two because I can't do two. Right. Like, really? Okay. That's the worst. Though. I hate <laughs> having to. Ch- <laughs> we both sound like these are great problems. Right. To have, but like when stuff. Oh, my God. When there's a conflict, girl, I, don't, I just keep on saying it's all going to work out. I'm going to do all right. of them. I say it constantly. Yeah. And I have had I've done a commercial and a TV show on the same day. Girl, I was up for like 24 hours. Woo! I was a little delirious, but <laughs> I pulled it off, you know, and, and it just happened to work out because a lot of people, they're going to be like, oh, you're doing another project that day. That's not going to work out for us. But it exactly. worked out. like, girl, I, I was up at 5 a.m. to maybe noon doing the commercial, ran over to the TV set. And I mean, you you feel tired, but like, you feel like a real actor that day. Right. You know, like, I didn't act it from the time I opened my eyes to the time I'm laying down. Today was a good day. Yes, I love that. Yes, I'm always like, it'll, and I have to just operate from that. You know, a little pro tip for y'all, especially with some of you who are newer, don't count yourself out. Something I used to do, on, I didn't even realize I was doing it. So you get an audition, you see the shoot dates. Yeah. And and I guess that's me being confident. I'd be like, ooh, I'm gonna book that. So I'm not even available this week. <laughs> I could book myself out from the audition. <laughs> I love it. And don't let me get pinned. Then I get pinned. My brain be like, so if something, my managers and agents are not on that train. So they sending me more. And I'd be like, oh, but the such and so. Hey, come like, on just now. Like, just why don't you tape anyway? <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I'll be like, you know what? Get, bring them all. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work out. Just bring them all. I'm going to be in two places at one time. <laughs> it's going to happen. Come on, bring. That's me now. But I had to I had to admit that I was booking myself out for yeah. stuff that was not booked yet. Yeah, yeah. But that goes to show my confidence. I'm like, well, I'm a, oh, I'm a three gigs already. I don't even know. Let me tell you, when I first moved here, um, I had like, I don't know if you want to call it beginner's luck. God was trying to let me know I was in the right place. But literally, I was booking everything that I auditioned for, like, say, four roles in a in a four four, four roles in a row, something like that. Yeah. So I, I didn't and I didn't understand audition. So I thought you audition. And then if you lucky, you get the call back and then they put you on hold and then you book it. But I thought that being put on hold or on a veil was like a technicality. I thought that when they say that you're going to book it. (laughs) So I just so I was talking to a casting director I had met. And so I was like, oh, I, I booked this other role. And she said, oh, I thought you said you were on hold. And I was like, well, yeah, but that's booking, right? I was so stupid. <laughs> she was like, no, they they still have other people that they're considering. And I was like, oh, and of course I did not book that role. <laughs> I was like, my confidence must have been carrying me, but she burst my little butt. <laughs> Somebody got to tell you. Somebody got to tell you. They'd be like, oh, sweet. Let me no, tell you how this works. <laughs> I thought it was like that meant hold on while we fill out this paperwork <laughs> to get you in next week. Like, don't even trip. We got you. I thought for sure that it was a done deal. And now, girl, I've been placed on hold for a couple of things. And I'm like, ooh, I know I'm going to get one of them and I get none of them. It happens. It happens. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> they love me. They they gonna call me. They love me. Clearly, I'm I'm booking, uh, and that's what. Of course, I, in my community, I'm always like, we're booking rooms, book yeah. rooms, because absolutely. that absolutely counts. Who see win. y'all? Don't feel bad. This is what this is how we used to think. So we we, we do don't know things. until we know. You know, you it's a process, and you're learning along the way. And until somebody tells you, you really yeah. how can you know? You absolutely. know. So. 
<laughs> last, last thing. This is oh, that tickled my whole soul. I, hold on while I go fill out this thing. Hey, just hold up. I got you. Got this, girl. Tell your friend. It's like they on the phone. Hold on, hold on. Um, Stacy got this. Stacy. Oh, okay. We back here. You got. it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Thank you, God, for laughter. Oh, one last thing before we go. Yes. Oh, let me set. Let me settle myself. Mm. Oh, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> It'll carry you a long way. Right. Okay, I got to share one more story. It's quick. It's quick. Yeah. Uh, I had a, one of my friends back in Atlanta, back in the day when I was still acting in Atlanta, uh-huh. coming up in the film and TV scene there. We were so that we were so idealistic that, you know how like they'll say like, you audition for something and they'll say, shoot date is March 1st. Okay. And so maybe you're, you may not even be pinned for, but I used to, we used to think we still had a chance. So it would be like m- the morning of March 1st and be like, <laughs> there's still a chance they may call. So let me stay ready. Like as if they were going to call me that morning to be on set. So, like, I held on to the very, I mean, the very last day until I was I like, love it. huh, that's weird. They didn't call me. Maybe the project got pushed <laughs> and they didn't let you know. Oh, it's going to start like March 2nd, sure. apparently, because I haven't gotten a phone call. Let me refresh my email. Hold on. Hold on. It took me a while to catch on that. Oh, oh. I, I see. I see. Oh, okay. um, oh, you know, for a moment, Stacey, before we wrap, I do want you to hold in your mind's eye for a moment. Mm. The seasoned actor at home right now, Mm. maybe been in the game 15 plus years and has hit a low. It's just gotten quiet to the point where they're thinking, I guess my time is up. Who am I fooling? It's maybe I should just do something else. Throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Also holding your mind's eye, the young, excited, hungry actor who doesn't seem to be getting a breakthrough. They're not having that beginner's luck right now. It's mm-hmm. it's just feeling like they're hitting wall after wall and they too feel like maybe I'm just kidding myself. Maybe I should just quit. What virtual hug, what word of encouragement can you give them? Yeah, what can you give them? Well, for both of them, I would ask them what made them want to be an actor. What is it about acting that they love? Hold on to that. Remind yourself of that. Um, And find it wherever you can. Meaning, I enjoy reading plays. I enjoy seeing plays. I enjoy looking at movies. I enjoy, like, find that joy even when you're not getting the results that you want, still find joy in the journey. Find joy in the journey is so important because if I, if I only am happy when I book, then that means I'm not happy every day. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait for that validation, if you will, to keep me going. I have to find it in myself. So I would say, why did you get into acting? What is it about acting that you enjoy? Go back to that. Go back to that. If you you love For Colored Girls, that's one of your favorite plays, do a monologue from For Colored, like remind yourself of, this is what I'm meant to do. This is why I'm doing it. You have to be able to fill yourself up because you can't wait for this industry to fill you up, Okay. You cannot wait for it. And 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 don't, don't get so wrapped up in the results that that's all you, you yearn for. Find other ways to be happy in your life at the same time. I like the salsa dance. You know, I like spending time with my family. Take yourself out of work, 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 acting, acting, gigs, gigs, making it big, doing it. You can't, you're going to drive yourself crazy because these types of, you see it on the, the award shows all the time. People, you know, just getting accolades, 50, 60, 70. like your success, so to speak, can happen at any point in your life. So mm-hmm. find the happiness now, find the success now. If you get an audition, 
you are winning. You know how many people didn't get auditions? So it's a it's a thrill just to get that. It's a thrill to have the things that I've already had because before that I didn't have it. Sometimes I got to remind myself of where I came from. Yeah. I keep sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to get there and I want to do this. Remember where I used to be? I used to have zero credits. Okay. I used to have zero auditions. So if you think about where you've come, sometimes that can give you the, the strength to keep going. Cause you like, I've already been winning. Mm-hmm. Like, don't don't poo-poo on the other successes. Like, celebrate that. Celebrate that. It, you must have been talented to even get to this point. And if and if you feel like, you know, I'm not good enough or I, I'm not this, or I'm not that, change it. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at memorization. Guess what I work on every day? Memorization. Because I want my, my, my weakness to become my strength. All if right. you feel like there's something that you can't do, work on it. They don't like me because I'm I'm not good at comedy. Well, work on comedy. I don't cry very well. Work on crying. Whatever it is, work on it. Make yourself better. Make yourself get to the point where they can't deny you. Come on. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? Keep on going if that's what you want to do. I mean... We do have a choice. This is not, nobody forcing us to be in this industry. My husband always makes fun of me. He said, this is the industry you chose. Yeah. (laughs) This is that. So this industry has ups and downs and you got to be able to roll with them both, you know? So girl, I got a lot to say, (laughs) but, but I, I will say everybody can do this. Like there's, and you see on television and movies, there's all types of types of people, all, all types of roles, ages, sizes, like there's room for all of us. Don't be discouraged. You know, if there's one person, I remember I would look at, say, um, what's her name on Grey's Anatomy, um, Chandra, Chandra Wilson, Chandra Wilson. Mm-hmm. I say, well, she kind of looks like me. That was my encouragement. Um, I would see Yvette Nicole Brown on commercials before yeah. I was even in acting. And I'm like, oh, oh that girl, she kind of looks like me. It's, those people give you encouragement. So maybe even look to some of the people who remind you of yourself. It doesn't even have to be the way they look. Like I said, I looked up the Sally Field. Yeah. Find, find the joy in the doing. Yeah. And it'll give you the encouragement to keep going. And then on top of that, remember your faith, remember your support system, remember the other things in life that make you happy, because you're going to need all of that to take you through this industry. Every single thing. (laughs) (laughs) That was a (laughs) lie. Well, no, it's it's what we need. It's what we need. You you have spoke you have spoken to the heart of someone right now, Stacey. And that's what really warms my heart. Like, and this just doing this this series, it's been powerful. And I'm I'm honored to sit here and, and hear your story and hear you pour into into people because we need it. And there look, there's days, you know, even though you are the one friend's call for the for the for the light and for the encouragement. I'm sure there's days where you need a little, you Come need your cup pull. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? And same thing. I got to call here. on my village. <laughs> yeah. Same thing over here. It's like, yeah. so it's all right. It's just every, everything is temporary. It's, it's a moment. But what you, what you said really is just having other things, other resources and not, we cannot look to this industry to solely make us happy. That's true. And might I add one more thing? Yeah. There isn't like a time limit. Like once you've been in the industry five years, they promote you to the next. Like it's not it's not working in a law firm. It's not, you know, a traditional type job. So somebody can book a huge role their first year of acting or maybe they book a huge role their 20th year of acting. There's no formula. And so that is exciting to me because I know that my big break, so to speak, can be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It, can, it can be that for any one of the people listening, your big break can come at any point. 
and you gotta be in the game to win it. So for me, I'm going to stay in the game because I, I do wanna win it. I wanna get to that point where I'm working consistently on projects that I wanna work on and at the level where I wanna do it. So that drives me to remembering what that vision is and knowing that each day I'm getting a step closer, a step mm -hmm. closer. I love that. You gotta be in the game to win it. There ain't, oh. no other, ain't, no way, ain't no other way to say it. I mean, truly, truly. And you and I both know because we know so many other actors, it literally is one gig away. Yeah. Like anytime. I, I have I can touch several of my friends right now right who are now. series regulars on hit shows. And it, it was just an audition like any other yeah. audition. And that's encouraging because I know that if it happens to people I can see and touch and feel, it can happen to me. You know, it's it, somebody said something like, who is it? If, if the blessing is on my street, I know it's coming to my house next. Right. Welcome to that. <laughs> neighborhood. To that the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, it's in the neighborhood, you know, and it, it lets you know this thing is real. And for people listening, if you don't know somebody, who um, who that's happened to, I can tell you, I know a whole bunch of people who mm -hmm. it's happened to, and it could be from zero credits to a whole bunch of credits. And, but you, you just never know when it's your time, it's going to be your time. Absolutely. Just hold on. And that hold on, and I love what you said a bit earlier about work, keep working on you so that when opportunity does arrive, you're ready. Come on. You are ready. Yeah. Woo, y'all, you see you see the people I hang around with? <laughs> see this connection? Oh my gosh, Stacy, thank you so much for sharing your light with this amazing audience. Y'all, I'm gonna put everything, all her links in the show notes so you can check out what Stacey's on. I know y'all been looking at her like, I know her, she, she, she was in that thing with the, with the man. <laughs> yep, that was me, the thing with the man, that was me. <laughs> I tell my mother all the time, I was like, that's the stage of my career I'm at, especially with this bald head. Like people are like, you, you was on something. I know. I, I seen you before. I know. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all of you, thank you so much for watching Booking Magnet Magic. Remember, you have a gift that the world needs to see. There's something about you that is so unique, one of a kind, wonderful, so magical and magnetic. Just keep checking within. It's already there. It's already there. And so just know that that is always there with you. So you don't have to search for it because it's already within you. Stacey, thank you again. Tune in. If you missed any part of this series, tune in. There's so many great interviews here. Um, and we'll see you next time. Stacey, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.